Hello, Brian Davis with Home Improvement with another tutorial. This one's more of a trick uh, to do a, a, uh, an action that, that you may never do in your life. Um, but a lot of people have textured walls and textured ceilings, and I've heard of many people recently that are trying to remove them. And so I'm actually doing that for somebody right now. Um, and I want to show you a couple ways in which one could. So if you look up here, your standard uh, textured ceiling. What we want to do is fill it in. And I've done uh, walls where the texture was much uh, milder, uh, more of like a sand, in which case I'll just mud right over the surface, sand it down, and then paint it. But this is a little bit high, so I want to knock that down a little bit. The first thing, the first way I've done this is simply to take a scraper and to knock it down. Now, this is coming off fairly easily. What you did not see was that a few moments ago, I sprayed it down with some water. And so, simple process of just softening the plaster that's up there, let it sit for a few minutes. And sometimes if I have a really stubborn surface, I might spray it down, let it sit for five minutes, spray it down again, and then start working on it. But that's totally up to you. Spraying it makes a big difference. Now, today, just a few hours ago, I discovered another trick to this that makes it even easier. This is an ice scraper or a, uh, a flooring scraper. And I've got a, a section of ceiling that I'm having difficulty reaching by hand, and so I, I was looking for something with a longer handle, and I came upon this. I didn't realize how effective it was going to be, and I'm now going to use it every place else. If you look at the profile here, you'll see that it's got a bit of an angle to it, and so this side over here is a sharper point than this side over here. And that will play in in just a few moments, and I'll, and I'll show you why. If I use the blunter edge, like so, it will come off, but it'll take its time. If I use the sharper edge, like a scythe through a field of wheat, it just, it just like, like a knife through soft butter, find your own analogy. It just takes the, it off so quickly with so little effort. Now, I'm using a pushing action here, and that I find to be the most effective. If, because of balance, or because I'm working in a delicate area where I don't want to be quite as aggressive, I can use a pulling action instead. It's not quite as aggressive, but it still is more effective than using the blunt edge. And so, I have the pushing action, which I have to be careful with, because I can start to get some nicks into the ceiling up here. You can see this one right here was just starting to come through. A corner probably caught it as I was scraping. And so if I'm worried about that, if I'm working over here near the wall, maybe I want to be a little more delicate or more careful with the work that I'm doing, I might pull instead of push. But my new favorite tool, given what I learned here, I'm also now going to go back to my, my favorite uh, home repair store or uh, home supply store and see if I can find a stiffer uh, knife that I can use to scrape it in the same fashion. But until I do that, I'm going to use this. And this will actually make it easier when I don't, possibly without even using a ladder. The last thing I want to say about this is the angle at which you hit the ceiling is very important. If I go with a very aggressive angle, I'm more likely to dig into the ceiling. So especially as I'm getting used to the feel of it, I'm going very shallow, very close to the ceiling. Now I need to be careful that I don't hit the ceiling with these pieces back here, so I'm not going flush with the ceiling. Oop. I'm not going flush with the ceiling. Just finding a, a gentle angle and then very gradually working it to more aggressive until I find a place where I can get good movement, knock down most of the texture, and not do too much damage to the ceiling. Remember lastly, if you do damage the ceiling, it's not a huge deal because we're going to go over it with the, the spackle. Um, before we go and paint it, which will take out um, all the imperfections and impurities. And I'll show you that step a little bit later. This wall was also textured. The texture has now been knocked down and we're ready to begin to smooth it out. So, 
working with our standard spackle, our mud. I'm able to completely fill in the texture and smooth out the wall. Now depending on how uh, well I've been able to make the wall smooth will determine whether I need to make one or two passes. I'll smooth it out. This wall uh, appears that uh, it'll only take one pass. So one pass, let it dry, sand it down, and then it'll be ready to paint. Now just like when you are normally applying your spackle, you want to make sure the air bubbles have all been worked out. If it's very bubbly, you might need to make a few passes. And of course, as you work it, you remove the air bubbles. Being uh, economical with material, but if you're too economical, then it might require more passes. Enough to cover without being excessive about it.